I flung myself through the door and vaulted the toppled, long dead refrigerator that served as an ineffective barricade in front of me. My legs propelled me through the room and into a small hallway on the other side. I couldn't stop to eat the expired content of the fridge. Appealing to me despite the stench of several days without food. The shrieks of pain and cries for mercy around me spurred my body onwards and filled me with unexpected energy in spite of my hunger. We were at war. I came to a halt in front of a small bathroom. A noise, something behind the shore curtain. My fear heightened. An imagine of the enemy flooded my mind. Merciless beasts wearing human skin, devouring indiscriminately, accepting no pleas and respect no arguments. Zombies. It had begun, as we expected, with a virus. The original infected were almost a cliché. There was no humanity left in them. Just mindless rage, twisted bodies, and some primal urge to consume others. Our generation had prepared with almost obsessive focus for this monster. The first way was eradicated with almost laughable ease. There were n we were not prepared for adaptation. We were not prepared for the creature we bred by destroying the instantly recognizable zombie. A creature with more tact. Most of the first zombies were killed at close range. Do you understand? since long-range attacks were less likely to be fatal. We had trained ourselves even before the outbreak to adequate infection with death when it came to zombies. A person died when their eyes clouded over and they started biting. Not when you put a bullet in their head. The new strain of the virus still controlled the body, yes, but it left all faculties to the hosts. Maybe you could pull the trigger on a hopeless crazed cat, cat catcher of your best friend, your spouse, your child, but what if there were still a soul behind those eyes? Even if even as the attack they sobbed and screamed in their own voice. All the virus needed was a moment's hesitation. I bet you hesitated. I did. Which is why I could only watch as my arm wrenched back the shower curtain and my hand reached for the cowering child. Why could only beg for forgiveness before the virus used my mouth to tear ragged, bloody hunks from his body? Why I couldn't even vomit as my hunger dissipates with the now sickening family, familiar taste of human flesh? We are at war, and I am 